Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Iowa soccer supporters. Ben Brackett here, your Soccer Talk co-host with my good buddy, Blake Sievers. Blake, what's up, man? We're in the lair, back at it, sharing a mic. Yeah, this is, uh, we haven't done this for a while. No, but I understand that people like that, which is um, a good plug for our YouTube channel. Check it out. Um, we also, uh, our guest today, his YouTube interview is, is good. He's, he's an animated character, um, an Iowa soccer legend uh, who has been uh, in search of the title for a while now, hasn't he? Yeah, we, uh, his, his past success this summer finally put him in the, uh, that specific exclusive group of Iowa soccer legends. This is true. So today we've got uh, the legend, Charlie Bales, also known, known as Chuck, Chuk, Hey, hey. Um, Chip, Chip. Yeah, I don't know, all the Bales types that you could have. Um, hey, Bales is kind of our favorite, but Charlie Bales is a uh, great friend of the podcast. Uh, a soccer lover in every sense of the word and uh, really you know it seems to me that his only goal other than um, winning for with the menace and then with who you know with whatever Iowa soccer organization he ends up at or whatever soccer organization he ends up at hopefully it's an Iowa one um, other than winning he just wants the game to get spread around to everybody and play it and make it accessible right that's right so uh, stay tuned we do have some breaking news in the middle of this so um, that's right hopefully you catch that yeah enjoy fourth power play of the night for the rampage they've converted on one and a penalty shot bales charlie bales right side that big right leg the thunder leg they call it Seven fifty-three to go. My hands are sweaty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the man of many nicknames, Charlie Bales, Chuke Bells, Charles Bales, Hay hey. Bales. Hey Bales, yep. I like Hay Bales is one of my favorites. Uh Charlie. When you guys text me, hey, hey, I know. <laughs> Something good's coming up following it. It's really nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So this is like take two from six August, months ago yeah almost. take two um, yeah so normally the first question is have you ever been on a podcast but <laughs> so sort of kind of this would be my third time on your podcast uh <laughs> second second one to air however i forgot about that yeah that one way back uh, in the day that was like usl pro iowa announcement it was that's right how'd you get the nod for that don't know <laughs> was the only one that i was the only one that band. said yes to you <laughs> only one that said yes uh well so uh you guys have come a long way thank you thank you it looks like you have as well <laughs> um so we love you charlie and you know that um we've we've really enjoyed spending some time with you in this last year and uh we've been trying to figure out what would really qualify you as an iowa soccer legend because you know, you've got you've got a quite the resume but uh, just recently you really uh you really tipped the balance and made it undeniable what was that it what was definitely that? debatable it was previously and okay. our listeners were like really yeah you're gonna have him as a <laughs> iowa soccer legend so what so, was it what, what it was your what? co-gm role of the menace the winning the yeah. usl2 yep. title yeah boston it last summer um i think that's it's the ultimate uh, uh pathway right like you've literally gone from i from Sorry, but like player in the middle of nowhere to um not only having played for the menace and played um professionally but then co-gming uh, you know like running the menace and uh winning a national title i mean that's totally badass so, so someone else here did that too eh? yeah yeah but he was playing is this a plug for our youtube <laughs> <laughs> it is a plug for our youtube let's let's just go ahead and look at the camera Show please the Blake. yeah so Show yeah oh. my hands heavy so we have um get on youtube go to kick it forward podcast you can check this out so we have a goalkeeper jersey from way back in the day doritos which and what year was that? Do you have That's any probably idea? a 2014. Okay. Then we got a couple, uh, couple jersey or warm up tops from last season. Autographed Rita's Cantina, kick it forward in the back. A lot, of, a lot of pros on that. A lot of professional signatures now. So that'll be worth some money. Yes, yeah, I think we're so. Gonna be then we watching have, that. We have Ben's old old school like US ISL soccer connections. Yep. Diodora. Oh, that's sweet. Um, I would pay top dollar for that thing. 
Yeah, it's super cool. Well, I remember I wore it at the final and everybody was like, dude, where'd that come from? Where'd you get it? And we can't disclose all it's our nice, sources. It's nice we? that you guys share clothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so normally around this time, we ask our, our guests to you know, kind of give the origin story and talk us through. Part of me wants to make you go Benjamin Button style and talk uh, talk backwards and start Whoa, from the. I've but never even thought about it like yeah, that. I, I really hadn't until just now either. What do you think? Should we appro- approach it that way? Should we start from the the back and go to the front? No, I don't no, think so. No, no I think no. that I think it's way more intriguing because just knowing that, like, imagining your dad out there in his jeans coaching you, I think that's where we need to start. Yeah, so, we'll goes lose my mom. We'll lose Charlie as well. He has to go back. No, hundred percent. Yeah. I'll just walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> You want to do okay? Yeah, um, let's start at the beginning. Sorry, I, did, yeah, I, no, no, did I confuse I, no. your mother and father? No, we're good. Uh, <laughs> and they, they listen to the pod as well. They'll listen to this one for sure, oh. for sure. So that's two listens already. Mom and Papa like, Bales, what's yeah, up? Yeah, that's yeah. half of our listenership yeah, yeah, usually. Yeah, so yeah. we're set. Um, no, so grew up in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Started playing uh, rec soccer at four years old. What uh, year are you? Like in? I'm a '91. Thirty gonna, years old. I almost threw an '80 at you. No, whoop the. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Why is beyond my ears? Um, so mother and father never never played the game. Um, I was one of the kids, probably a typical Iowan American kid who played every sport until you're about, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade, but um, was the most passionate about soccer, the best at soccer. Couldn't couldn't see a baseball as soon as we got, got to uh, as, uh, when it switched from coach pitch to kids. Yeah, throwing balls. Hard, actually, done. I was I was done. Uh, basketball was was. Yeah, was just. Uh, well, Never going to be tall enough. We talked about that this morning. You tapped out at five eight, so yeah, you tapped. <laughs> You're definitely not five eight. <laughs> five by the way, three quarters. You round up. <laughs> um, but ultimately, you know, went with soccer. Um, I played for Heartland Soccer Club. Uh, rest in peace. What, I say RIP. There. Yeah. What What point did you? What When were you making this decision where you were like cutting out everything else? Uh, this was, I think, the last sport I played. Other than football, we're not talking about that right yet. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, last sport I played other than soccer was sixth grade seventh grade so you grew up in was crsa back around back crsa then? was they were around so is that who you played Heart, for no heartland i played for heartland at like you even you 10 you eight? oh I, I did ymca soccer okay that's that's yeah. what i was getting at. yeah yeah so, so i did like first it's like little kick or it's like four season center in, in in cedar rapids uh five season center i can't remember um and then ymca and i was just tearing it up like at recess soccer and so the kids that were already playing club were like yo you know, yeah. you got a mean toe ball on you. Come, <laughs> yeah. come, come join us. What elementary school really? did you go to? Arthur Smash Elementary. It. Was that part of the diocese back in the day or? No, I, I did public, okay. uh, public grade school. What high school was that originally then? Uh, that would lead into Washington High School. Okay. So you used to be a CR Wash until we'll get yep. to that. But yep. okay. 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 Um, so, and so your mom, you said your mom was coaching the squad. What, for YMCA days, yes. Yeah. So what was her, her background? Uh, she had a master's degree in physical education. Okay. Uh, from University of Southern Florida, and she the Bulls. Rom, yeah, it used to be the Roman Bulls, now just the Bulls, but yes. Um, and I don't know. She, so like, did she play another sport though? Like, did she? Was she, she was a collegiate uh, badminton player. So if that qualifies you to coach wait, soccer. so both your parents are racket sports? Yeah, my dad was a professional racket player. Yeah, and I couldn't hit a baseball. So. Um, so did they, did they bond over their racket sports? Yeah, actually, that's how they met down in South Florida. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so they still they play pickleball now. My mom is very passionate about pickleball. She just got back from Florida going down there. My dad is uh, he gave up competing because he gets too competitive at an age where as soon as we kids, my uh, myself and my brother were able to beat him, he stopped with anything competitive. <laughs> um, sorry, father. Uh, <laughs> um so heartland soccer club was sweet we at the very first age that you can do state cup is that u13 i believe i think it used to be yeah. i don't yeah. know what it is so anyway. so when, that, we, when we were growing up it was u11 but we're a little older yeah so so u13 U-thir- u13 state cup shout out to the heartland mutiny we actually uh defeated a ankeny fusion team back in the wow. ankeny days and they were way better than us <laughs> um brandon, brandon fricky uh will witherspoon um Daniel Peacock, some other guys, they were very, very good. That's uh, a strong at, list at that at that age. Brandon Freaky, that's a good shout. He's friend of the pod. He's been on friend of the pod, friend of mine as well. Yeah, good. So who's like who your coach? Who was your coach? Was it- uh, oddly enough, Gareth <laughs> was, was Gareth Smith back uh, in that. Okay. Yeah, he just uh, stumbled upon Cedar Rapids. He, I think he was in Marshalltown before yep. that. 
then ended up in Cedar Rapids. Another coach that was in the club is Adam Smith. Um, who's, oh, I remember him. Yeah, he's MLS. gone on to do really successful stuff. Yeah, he was up in was he up in Portland or somewhere? Yeah, he's, he's, he's traveled coach. all over the place. Uh, he's working with a sports agency right oh, now. Oh man, I, that's a blast from the past name right there. Good shout, Charles. And uh, another another coach that was at Heartland that's also then jumped around the pros is Josh McAllister. Yep. Um, so all three of them were. Josh is an eighty four. We know Josh. Yeah. So, um, you know, they were they were all a part of uh, Heartland Soccer Club uh, at the beginning of their careers. Where did you guys like train and play? Uh, so there was a couple fields behind Sport Zone, which is now a trampoline park. <laughs> is it really a trampoline park? So now? everything, that every, was the original everything, so- everything soccer right? from my childhood is is defunct. <laughs> um, it is it's a trampoline park now. The fields back there were not very nice, um, but we we made do. So Charles was like blazing a path. Just like <laughs> everywhere I go, yeah, just exactly. <laughs> um, the, from from there, it, and going through the club system, I would guest play up an age group with CRSA. I would throughout the years as I was getting better. I would actually travel during the summers with the Des Moines Menace. At we're getting to like fifteen and sixteen for what's it, uh, Super Y League mm-hmm. back in the day. So I go to tournaments and showcases with them. Um, Heartland then at when we were 17, we combined Heartland, CRSA, Iowa City Alliance, and ISC to form Eastern yeah, Iowa. Oh, that was like so that the was original. Yeah. So we were the we were the original Again, ones. RIP EIU. <laughs> that, 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 that wasn't wasn't because of me. It wasn't because of me. Uh so so we just absolutely ran through two state cups. Um because did you guys do anything at region? Sorry, keep going, but then yes, we did actually. So we um we were semifinalists in, in both years of regionals as well. Nice. Um, and back when regionals was a real thing. Correct. Back in the day. Yes. Um, so, yep. Moving on from there. I Who th- were some of the boys? Yeah. What, what was the squad? I mean, that's like, United. Like... Um, I can name all some of the guys that went places. Uh, I went to Western Illinois. Eric Boyer went to Drake. Drake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was two guys that went down to Truman State, Will Hirsch and Joe Riken. Uh, Tanner Schilling went to Colgate. Nick Arpey went to Colgate. Um, Tanner Schilling. Andy Holt was our keeper. He went to Butler. Uh, who else? That's a Zobeck kind of like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about those guys you talked about from Ankeny? They they didn't uh, win state cup. No. Well, um, Iowa soccer. Uh, okay. Uh, they went other places to find competitions. Well, so. Ricky went down to, and Witherspoon went down to Kansas City. Yeah, gotcha. so they were going to Kansas City. Was there you, you were about to explain to me that Iowa soccer didn't have any options for them? <laughs> was there no? Was there a, was there a Central <laughs> Iowa team? Like who was was it? Was the menace? A youth? So by the time we had combined and um, you know had that EIU team, the only team that we would play was uh, yeah Des Moines Menace had an academy team. Who was the coach at EIU? Who was that? Who was back in the? Who was that back in the day? Uh, we had what was the older, older gentleman from Iowa City Alliance, Parrot. Oh, he was great. Yeah, him and his son. Are the his son was a freaking player, man. Yeah. What a player. Yeah, Tom, Tom Parrot, and yeah, Ian Parrot. Right. Ian Parrot. I forget. I forget who the other coach Ian. was. Okay. Yeah, Ian Parrot. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you're winning state cups, fifteen, sixteen. You're now oh, that was actually 17, 18. Okay. So I think the thing about Charlie though, right? Like he loves to play so much. Um, like what it was like of your your uh that era, say between like 14 and 18, like what was your highlight? Well, was it, it playing was I mean, it high playing school. high school soccer? Also, we gotta get oh, into high school because okay. at okay. some point, yeah. I think that's gotta play a massive. Oh, let me part. touch on playing too much because I I like I truly love the game and, and bracket spin around me enough. And I was going to say, I think that's play, our like, bond. You really Charlie. don't play in very much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I Charlie, play, that's uh, our bond. That's our bond, uh, yes, right? Is that yes. we both love so to play. I like, I would come home and I had like a, like a soccer field in my backyard and I would just come home and strike balls all like all day, every day after school uh, to the point where when I was 16, I cracked like the two bottom vertebrae on my back from um striking like kicking, kicking, <laughs> kicking the, too many balls <laughs> kicking too many too so i was hard. in the back brace for a while and that was tough um and uh but on, on moving over to Z- xavier high school um shout out to the saints played there for four years uh played varsity amir, amir uh from mount mercy friend of the pod just retired just retired. legend yeah retired oh, from xavier was, um, yeah yeah yes. oh, okay um you gotta get him on he actually he came over to xavier um, my freshman year. So that was his first year ever. Uh, so I started 
I didn't, did I start? No, I was tiny as a freshman. I came off the, I was the first one off the bench as a, as a freshman. Um, there were some really good players on that team. Uh, Mike Noonan went to Drake. Danny Bauer went to Marquette. Uh, AJ Contra went to Green Bay. Alex Wynn went to Loyola. Uh, Will Martin went to Loyola, which at that time, getting that many Division One from one high school team is high school that's team. obscene. Really. Yeah, so it's like a Catholic system, man. Just like dallying football. They, just, yeah. they, recruit, <laughs> they recruit, they recruit, they buy the players, and there you go. <laughs> that's a public school, private school, and the private school usually wins out. So I'm not Blake, better at all. What does Blake think about this? Really, <laughs> my my freshman year, we I think our goal differential was uh, in the hundreds. Good uh, Lord. with like nine goals conceded and 119 goals something <laughs> something ridiculous and then we uh lost in the state actually people in des moines knew me when i moved back here like way later in life um as like the little kid from xavier who uh put a penalty in the county parking lot oh uh, no oh uh, yeah freshman year when i was a freshman yeah oh so you were selected to take the penalty yes i said i said no but then there was a junior uh, i won't name names that didn't feel comfortable doing it um and so i was like okay fine and oh, but you said fine see like that's the when i'm a coach i'm like okay who wants to take yeah, one yeah, and if you're so, not if you're not interested i'm i don't want you to take yeah one. so 14 year old charlie bales just put that thing like Wait, it, it, roberto baggio style 100 yeah. percent. is that the worst penalty you've ever missed that's just like in a in a match that's yeah. the last one i've ever missed i was just saying the only you, one. when you miss one in a real game you never miss because again, that's right? the last time i tried to like open up my hips and place a ball and everyone knows me knows i go either right down the middle or to the left as mm. hard as i can with my laces mm. well it's now by, by the time moment, the goalie sees it it's, it's gone. Gone. yeah so what position were you playing back? I, I, oh blake i was just about to say that you and charlie now share something what? oh yeah a heartbreaking oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 thanks ben <laughs> thanks ben <laughs> Anyways, what um, position were you playing? So change that subject. In, Sorry, dude. Love in you, man. club soccer, um, I was I was actually like a, a left winger, and we had a target forward that I would just I got very good at running off of, and he would just set me for shots, and I was scoring a lot of goals. Who was that? Uh, Eric Boyer was okay. a target forward. Um, and then as I got older, and people were saying that if you want to play at a higher level, like based on your skill set, you are hundred percent a right back. I started playing it and really enjoying it. Um, so as I got to 18 and then into college, uh, I was playing right back in high school soccer for Xavier, right after my freshman year, I, Amir said that I could go wherever I wanted to. So, people, <laughs> so you're like people, an old school sweeper. People, people joke that I was taking goal kicks for Xavier and then chasing the ball and trying to flick on headers. We, um, we, we know that you're not capable of actually covering that much ground that quickly. Oh, I was, I was rapid. <laughs> Absolutely rapid. All right. So successful high school. How'd you get, re I always like, I'm what's, yeah, what's the recruiting story? The recruiting story is interesting. I was getting, um, I thought I was going to Wisconsin on, uh, on scholarship. Uh, they, I, I, I went to one of those like very, very overpriced college camps and, absolutely tore it up, made the all-star game, played against the current players and like played That's really well. back in the, like, could you imagine playing against high school kids in college? Oh, we did. You did? Yeah. We used to do the camp game. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. When I was a, this is a good like fail story. When I was uh, going into my freshman year, I went to camp, like, but not, I didn't pay to go to camp. Yeah. I just like, I basically participated, but so I could hang out with the guys and our team got beat in the final by the high school kids like the all-star all team yeah yeah. Was, yeah and like i was shite i was so bad and like i think i gave a ball away that like you know we lost on and like it's one of these like haunting things where then like i absolutely like had a meltdown that night with the like the like the the, the captain of the team you know like i had two beers or something and i was like oh, i'm gonna try so much harder <laughs> If there are any brown boys listening, they will absolutely remember this. I didn't realize that. Can you do that nowadays? Do you guys know? Like, can current college players play against incoming? Yeah, they freshmen? must be able to. I think so. They must okay. be able to. All right, so I think done. Sorry, but that, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty shocking. Yeah, so that was, and I was going to other camps and thinking that I was going to go places. I thought that, and I had I, the thing that I had for, going for me was players that had played with me that were already at schools were like, "Hey, this guy's legit." Uh, so I thought it was going to go to Loyola or um, even, even Drake um, shout out to shout out to Sean Holmes. Yeah. That's a good well, decision. Good decision, Sean. No, I didn't. I didn't. I like, I, I love Sean now at the time or when um, at the time when I was being recruited, 
I just didn't understand. Um, but he's since apologized to me. Like when I, when I moved back to Des Moines, we were doing Wanderers. He said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake in not bringing you to Drake. Um, so how did, all doc, how did Dr. Johnson get a hold of you? Dr. Johnson. So, I mean, we hit it off because he drove to Cedar Rapids to, it was a CRSA ID clinic. Um, and he showed up in jeans, no Western Illinois attire whatsoever on a motorcycle. Um, and I did not want to be at this, this, uh, clinic on this day or id camp on this day i just i don't know i wasn't feeling it and then i think it was because i like a lot of, all my friends had already committed places and the level wasn't great so i the story goes where, where he tells it that he you know he, he took off his jeans shorts underneath it's his classic look he throws on his, his cleats um and we were playing together on the same team and every game that we played as soon as we started losing then i would just like take over. And so he asked me point blank, do you only try when you're losing or mad? And I said, no, I can try whenever. And that, and then he offered me a very, a solid scholarship <laughs> based on coming to see me. And then he came to watch me play for, for Xavier in state my senior year. He loves, I love that. He loves the Iowa high school state tournament. We talked to him a couple of years ago. He's like, been there he every year. Yeah, it's he, great. He's been at that tournament the iowa high school soccer tournament every year for probably 20 years yeah he's awesome so i assume i mean just based on the fact that like you live with one of his sons now yeah. i assume you guys still like each other and uh, get along uh, he's like he's <laughs> as he, long as he pays rent <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah dr johnson's like a second father to me so um you know my girlfriend's still in macomb right now uh she actually just got hired as the uh head women's coach yeah right. breaking, breaking news, news. here oh, we go we love an exclusive thanks charlie i don't know it's official yet oh god oh, oh. that's why he was asking when we're gonna release <laughs> yeah, this podcast when we're gonna release so here's a little backstory <laughs> we get we get in here today in the lair again youtube plug and charlie's like hey when is this going to be released I'm like we don't really know we're not really playing a lot and uh now we know why. It's because I put my foot in my mouth all the time. And just did it oh, right there. The best part is that, like, that she's the she's the real the Jose, the real one. Yeah, the real, the real Jose, the real Jose. And uh, so I'm back there all the time, and he's he's my only friend left there. So we drink we drink beers at his house and hang out and tell stories. That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, you know, you saw your coach last week, Steve's. I saw my coach a few weeks ago. And there's there's something special about it even you know like reminiscent and yeah yeah and well and, yeah and just that that bond that you have like coaches become that like you know it's your coach but it's also like you know it's kind of like a second father yeah I mean, we had blair reed in a few weeks ago right yeah. talking to him and he gets a text from one of his players like hey coach i just got back in the country flew back in it was over winter break <laughs> just wanted to let I mean, you know i yeah. was back he's like yeah. but like that's he wants and, to know that the coach got, know that. Yeah. decades of those kind of players and yeah. stories too yeah it's super cool should we get into the leatherneck story about like my leatherneck career yeah yeah um, or do you want to talk go back a little bit in uh kicking footballs where do we want to go well back? let's just let's just touch on the kicking footballs thing because so you you did win a state championship as a high school soccer player i did my senior year yes which is at, like one of those things i would definitely like i won when i was a sophomore and i was on the like it's not like i just sat on the bench but there's something to be said for like as a senior kind of like being the captain of the team and like winning so that's super cool yeah it that, was, must have, that must have felt good and was like a, a, a probably major achievement at the time it felt very good uh especially coming from um we like i had never won it before and going from being the 14 year old kid that put a a, a ball uh, into <laughs> orbit to to lose a game it was against norwalk by the way um carlick's got your number huh yeah yeah we, Ooh, we've so talked was, about it since it was kyle cummings was really really good okay <gasps> tulsa boy flash from the past um they had one other very very good player but where was it going with that? Oh, so Probably Steen Hook. Was it Steen Hook? He might have been young. The it was crawls. like a 94. The crawls were there too. Yeah. Fair enough. Continue. The Sorry. Crawl, like for the lot, every year in the last 20 years. <laughs> so, <Norwalk> soccer. <laughs> so I can touch on football and then get into winning a state championship. So basically, so was this they did they going into my yeah, yeah. Going into my senior year, all my best friends were like the football team. Uh so court, we, we should probably back, star. We should just like mention that you're like I imagine you as the most popular kid at Xavier high school. No. Uh, sorry. The kid that has the, like the most friends, like he like gets in all the different groups. Like you were probably friends with like the football guys, the soccer I, guys. I had friends, but my, my friend group was like the football guys. 
And then uh, it was always weird for three years being like the soccer guy who then you go to football on Friday nights. Um, are we, are we, okay. oh, yeah. No, this could be no, a we're disaster. Going. Keep going. Keep going. Um, and you go, I would be in, at football games on Friday nights, like watching my, my friends play. So um, going into senior year, they said, we don't have a kicker. We don't have a punter. Um, and it just so happened that I told you I had a soccer field in my backyard. So we, we would play backyard soccer barefoot with a volleyball, probably four to five days a week. And it was me and my football friends and a few other, the soccer guys. And some of them were getting like slowly, but surely like very good. Um, to the point where junior and senior year, we made a indoor soccer team called the Almighty Headbutters at that sports zone. That's right. I, I remember this story yes. on the first podcast. So we, we, we were actually, we were the sunglasses. Yeah, we, we, we were, <laughs> we at these games, we would, we would come in with a, with a speaker on the shoulder. We would have choreographed dances, like doing everything uh, f- for the people. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> do you remember any of those dances? Yeah. This would be a but, good, but, like, but this I, is, I would need, I would need this. I would need the music and I don't remember the song um so we're always looking to plug our youtube channel so what we'll do is yeah let me think of the song after this and we'll follow it up and i can teach everyone for sure um but there was Sorry, keep we, going. yeah we were at basketball games and then it was time for a almighty headbutters game the entire student section would leave a, a varsity basketball game <laughs> a, a xavier high school varsity basketball game and we would have two to three hundred people lining the the boards and the glass walls at, at the sports zone Oh, that's cool. And so it was me and my football buddies and they had no idea. I, I know one of the first games we ever played, uh, the kid was an absolute psycho, uh, Nick Garland, a middle linebacker for the football team. I'm running down the boards and I just hear, I got you, Charles. And I was like, what? Puts his hand up in the air, goes like this, absolutely levels the kid that's chasing me, sets a pick. Um, we, <laughs> we got lots of blue cards, lots of yellows. I think a buddy or mine got sent out and kicked out of sports zone. Um, <laughs> but once again, we were doing it for the people. So I, I actually ordered uh, like custom t-shirts, jerseys, and then also took like, uh, and it was a Cedar Rapids wide because like pe- we were a household name where you could customize your name and the number on the back. That's and so I great. sold 700 um, <laughs> of these shirts and it was, I would just use some of the profits to like pay for our indoor field fee. Um, but these kids were getting better at soccer, better at soccer. And I said, listen, I will kick for you. I will kick and punt for the football team if you go out for soccer in the spring. And they agreed. So I didn't know this part to the story. So we Match all these like Catholic private school football boys that are just monsters. Absolute oh, monsters. And, and I, I, yeah, because I mean, they won because, state, how many state titles in high school? Well, we were, we were, we were two a like for soccer. And I knew that like a lot of those other schools you play, it is, it's, it's the, the, the rosters are co- composed of, of a few soccer players and some, some just athletes. And we had some guys that were soccer players, but they weren't athletic. So I'd rather play alongside guys that are going to fight for the cause. So um, we, I was a starting kicker and punter. I was a, a, an all state kicker, um, had an absolute blast. Um, did you always kick from the T like field goals from the T or did you ever put it actually on the ground? When we were on like turf, I liked goal. it just on the ground. If it was grass, I used that little black. Uh, the tea. cheating tea yeah correct i bet you can absolutely you just kick it out of the end zone every time i was pretty decent at touchbacks but i was better at uh like i was very accurate for for field goals I like i was that. good to, to 55 yards and like just but extremely accurate um how was your onside so like, kick? Yeah, and bales can like smash absolutely smash the ball yeah so if you, you imagine yeah him smashing the big oh, i always i always asked i always asked and i think i've seen it done like in a football game before where you know, like the, the, the initial people, they're like on a kickoff, they're, yeah. they're unathletic and they're about 10 yards away from you. I never did it, but I, I always thought in my head, just like, kick one oh, right at him, right? Smash yeah, smash one. one and like they can't move and like ah, it hits them in the chest regrets. and they're just like, I probably would have caught it like 100%. Yeah. And then you could, like, I don't even know, can you return it? Like you catch it off as the, soon as it touches yeah. them on yeah. side, just you're trying for a touchdown. Oh my God. You could imagine, past them, but. imagine you just like hit it so hard, like actually get stuck in their helmet. Like I could see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, there was one punt where my buddy was a long snapper and he was absolutely terrible. Um, and he, he skipped one into me three times. And I told you I quit other sports for like a, a long time ago. So catching balls wasn't my thing. Uh, he, he skipped one in three, four times. 
I fumbled it three yards in front of me and I was like, what now? Took off around, like just around the widest person that I saw, um, got to the sideline and was trying to get out, but got, was tackled with my hand over the ball and it was the guy's face mask. Oh, and I just remember thinking to myself, like, how, how do, how do individuals play this sport? Like, <laughs> just I just ran murdered. the ball once. Just, I ran the ball once in my entire just career. Destroyed. And I wanted to cry. <laughs> like, absolutely destroyed. Um, so football, we, we were actually, we were good. We, for football, we were still the highest class for some reason. Uh, soccer, we weren't. We ended up losing in the state semifinal. So you got to go to the dome. That's got sweet. to go to the dome, kicked in the dome. Um, Who did you lose to? Do you remember? I was city high, and they were a one man show. The guy's name was uh, AJ Derby. He went to Alabama as a, as a tight end. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's okay. Arkansas. He went to Arkansas. Do, um, do and you he was have a kicker, punter, uh, quarterback, and free safety? So other than getting smashed on the sideline, do you have any uh, like comparable, just like sad, sad situations? like missing a penalty as a freshman like did you like in football yeah like did you miss any field goals or did you like fluff a kick or like drop a punt or no nothing that like cost nothing that cost us a game well they never punted xavier doesn't punt bracket this is that private school football <laughs> like and they never get they never have they never need we need to, they we never need, need to get off high school so he quit saying yeah, and they private. never need uh field goals to win games because they just destroy it because they recruit and <laughs> pick it so all right so <laughs> So I felt really bad for my friends. I, I mean, I, like by then I was very invested at the beginning. I can honestly say I was like, hey, this is kind of fun. And then getting into it and see, seeing how passionate they are about the sport, like you can relate to your own sport. So um, wanted wanted to do everything that I could for them. We lost. They were sad. I remember, I think the next day I told them, like, don't worry. Like, I'll, I'll win. I said, I'll win you a championship. Um, <laughs> and so ended up being... The starting right back was this. Our, our football uh, fullback was our starting right back for soccer. Um, took your spot. No, I told you. I was <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was that's right. Um, Sweeper. And who, who else? Um, there was two other football starters, but then the funniest one was one. One of my best friends was the backup keeper. Never thought he'd see a minute. Six uh, four kid. He was he was uh, shooting guard for the basketball team. He was the quarterback for the football team, and our starting keeper wound up breaking, breaking his wrist and he had to play. Did you shoot it and break his wrist? No, you jerk. Nope. nope. Jesus. Um, it was, he, 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 he then had to be the starting keeper. He, he is six, three. He would admit to you to your face that he is afraid of a soccer ball coming at him. And he was our keeper. Um, his first two games were city high and West when they were at, they, they're still good, but yeah. it was like a three, zero, four, zero. Um, and then had to play the first round of state against Norwalk as well. And that's when I was, I was taking the goal kicks for him. Um, Which is hilarious. I but, think. but we won, we won state. And that was like the, I don't know that that was like the, the end of my high school career. And you know, that the soccer season ends when high school's already over. So that yeah. was a good little like lead into, I think I did a like regionals that year, but then leading into the college. Full of confidence. Full of confidence. Where'd you go on visits to in school? I went all over the place. I went, um, I did a practice visit, which I would encourage any, anyone to do. Um, so I went on a practice visit to, to Luther. Um, when I say practice visit, like no disrespect whatsoever to the program. Cause I was thinking like D3 hundred percent would be like, could be an option or route for me, but it was like me contacting the coach and saying, hey, right. Like, Hey, I want to come check it out. Correct. Can I spend the day with you? Yeah. Like I knew two kids that were already there. Yeah. So that was kind of, my first taste you of should it. do that i yeah. mean i think and i think there's an opportunity to do that in a lot of places yeah i think so i think so as well especially, especially if they're in the backyard that makes it easy yes. well and like yeah. somebody like no you're and somebody like you who like you there's probably no question at that point like even if you were a lowly freshman like you could play d3 soccer like yeah you know that's that's for kids that want to play i was uh it, but it was it was funny because i told you that you know i was recruited by wisconsin and that was i had they via email they were like yeah we're gonna offer you the scholarship and then had then they ghosted me for like 10 days and then they had been like tracking a kid that decommitted somewhere else and they went with him um so my other options were and i was running out of time because i i, I had all my eggs in one basket um 
my other options where I had a bunch of T3 Minnesota schools that wanted me to come up there and still play that winger position that I was playing in club. Um, I think I would have scored a lot of goals. That would have been tempting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, he definitely would not have defended, would yeah. he? No. Uh, but Curtis Johnson, you know, came through and was like, yeah, you're going to play right back. Um, getting into Western, yeah, I, 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 I tore it up. Yeah. It was it a good was, career. It was fun. Um, when, and, I mean, if you play, if you played for four, I mean, you played, did you play all of your freshman year? So I started every game at Western. Nice. So I didn't have that luxury, but I play, I started every game after starting my sophomore year. Yeah. And I don't know, Blake, I know how to like, you had your Oakland year and then did you start all your games? No, I got hurt. I had like surgery. Well, my my only point, Jesus, (laughs) my, my only point to that was just that like, there's, it's hard to not love it when you're, you're playing and you're a part of the team. And if you're winning at all, then it's like, okay, great. Yeah. And it, and, and, and I lied. Um, I started, hey, hold on a minute here. What, what did you lie about? That's I started good. 82 out of 84 games because, um, I, I broke my foot and, um, I came back less fit than I should have been. So th- we had weird, a weird, weird, so <laughs> shocking. weird, um, love soccer hates to run. We, we had a rule where you had to pass the fitness test um, in order to, to start. What was your fitness test real quick? Uh, 120s. So it was uh, sprint 120 yards and then get back in a minute. Um, but, you know, it's either like a 14 down, 46 back, or 15, 45, so on and so forth. You do five, rest two minutes. and do We five used to do 1830s was our, our high school thing. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not a runner. Um, oh, those are terrible. And so you didn't f- pass fitness test. My super senior, but it was my super senior year. So I had started every game, um, s- uh, freshman, sophomore, junior year, um, and then and then couldn't pass by the first two games of um, of my super senior year at 22 years old. So Johnson didn't let you play. Uh, he subbed me in after seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like poor kid that was playing. I was going to say poor the poor kid guy. Playing, but it, was, it was probably his son, my roommate. Who knows? But and that's principle. Like, probably that's crazy. Son, oh no, he's all about principle. He's all, like, he's not going to budge for me. Um, even we, even though I had started every game in my career, I remember sitting there and just absolutely like staring at him, fuming. Um, we had one so where, I did lie earlier. We, <laughs> <laughs> Two things that are funny about this. The games that I was not allowed to start after my sophomore year were suspension due to yellow and red card accumulation. Um, (laughs) Our coach also at one point had us race for our starting spots. We had like a, we had to do our fitness test for the starting spot. So you would have had to race directly against Quinn or whoever. Like how create, like that is so old school to think about like, so we had a game where like our three of us that would have never started the game. <laughs> no, was the I, I, I actually, I won my race, but it was a three mile. So it was like a long race. Oh, I wouldn't. Ne- yeah. That was the only, I could, I could, if it, was a short, the race. it was a short race. I was in trouble, but the best was like our, our best center midfielder got beat out by like somebody who just wanted to like run him into the ground. Mm-hmm. And so like he started the game. <laughs> <laughs> Principal. Yep. Principal. Uh, no, Western, Western Illinois was fantastic. Um, it was, I, Played with uh, Hoos, you uh, pitch from here. Hoos um, is the man. So there's an Iowa pipeline to Western. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's it. There's less Iowa guys now than than there used to be. But uh, when I was there, it was myself. Hoos was there. Austin Gokner went to Ankeny. He was there. Yep. Um, a bunch of Novak. Iowa City High and City West kids. Yet uh, Novak from Waukee. Um, yeah, the people just kind of referred to us as like the Iowa meatheads too at West Illinois because it was like we, we all the kids that weren't good enough to go to Drake, Ben. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if we ever okay. lost to Western Illinois. I was going to say so. Like, what, so I don't I, know if you I, never I, did, but what about how I, many times? I, no, I never beat them, but I either like I think I tied three years and lost one year. But I also mm-hmm. scored from right back or center back three of my four years just to throw it in home space. <laughs> just to give a, that's that's fair. I wonder so, how many times that happened to Sean where he like scheduled a game against somebody he didn't recruit because he likes to do that. Right. And like how often did like that? I just... don't think it was, I don't think it was intentional, but it, it was intentional. Oh no. Yeah, he absolutely. Motivation, though, right. Oh, like yeah. like they, kids that absolutely... well, they played, they played Notre Dame like two years after McGinney started going there. You know what I mean? Like they played Yale. We never got a Brown game in there. Hmm. All right. So you, uh, you also played for the menace. Yes. Let's get Illustrious career. 
yeah, my I, my menace career was okay. Like, so what was, year were you good. in college? So when you started? I, I don't think I was ready enough to play before my my freshman year of college. Who was the coach back then? That would have been it was probably Lori Calloway. Oh, legend! That um, guy. So so I don't you bet that so, guy was great. So then I got my first year of college experience and. <laughs> got my first year of college experience and then came came back to Des Moines and then every year uh, after West Illinois season was over I would come to Des Moines so who'd you play for did you play for Callaway and Callaway uh Mike Jeffries that's right and, and that was Callaway's second stint yeah and because we played because yeah. we played for Callaway that's back right. in the day yeah uh, did you guys ever do mad dogs I don't know okay well no uh, no is the answer to that <laughs> he would sit up in the bleach there was like 60 kids on the roster yeah. And he would sit up at the top of the bleachers and just watch a scrimmage every day. That was training. I remember we were like 16. He came and like coached us. We thought it was like the coolest thing ever. We sat, we did like got in a circle like 30 yards away. And one guy would be in the middle and guys would just lump balls into the guy in the middle. And he would be responsible for clearing them over the circle. It was like a clearing drill. It was like, we were like, this is like the funniest, craziest thing ever. And you would just try to kick it. Like guys are pinging balls into you. Right. And you have to, you have to clear it, like it smash it. Yeah. It was just like do wild. You, do you remember doing the, where, where they would, he just placed balls along the, like the, the six yard box, 18 and the, the 12. And like, they'd take turn and we, the other, it was two teams. And so the one team would line up in the goal. It was like courage drill. And then you would just like, take like the other team would just take turns smash, smash. Ball. He, was smash still doing that. he was still doing that yeah. oh that's like if you jumped and turned your back like yeah there was oh, fitness to do then you're doing mad dogs yeah yeah we can't yeah. say that yeah. Yeah. no oh my god that was and, great and then yeah and then he, he literally moved up to like the the six yard box <laughs> i mean he was literally like he coached san jose clash oh, mls oh. first year ever like yeah, guy, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, he, he's a legend no he's amazing yeah he's just so old school super old school those those were my coaches i think that we uh, I think the best season we had was 2014 when I was playing um, Heartland division champions and the nice. regular season, like national champions. Nice. Uh, but couldn't get over that hump of uh, central central conference, whether it's Michigan bucks or now Flint city bucks. And, and so we can't skip ahead, but I mean, that'd be a great segue. We're not going to. So you, so you enjoy your menace career. Like, I mean, I, the thing from our first take that was deleted somehow, um, I think something that I remember from that conversation was just your, like your love for the menace and just like, like all these guys coming in town and you're like, Hey, like, let oh, me yeah. show you Des Moines. Like, let me, let me be the, and, and I feel like that's sort of the, at least the last conversation we had, it was like, that was sort of the theme. It was like, you know, in high school, you're like creating this, you know, these team atmospheres and yeah. you know, you get to the menace and you're creating this team atmosphere and love, here you are. That's what I you love, do as a job. I love to win. Um, and some would say that like, I'm too competitive and mo like most things that I do, I love being a part of a team or like, I, like, uh, as one of my good friends puts it, like just being a locker room guy, um, feeding off the people around you joke and having fun, but also like working together to achieve a, a common purpose. Um, so being a part of the menace was, it was super cool for me because like I said, I was playing at 15, 16 super Y league going and playing with the menace and, and knowing the brand. Um, I remember coming to a tournament at County where they flew in Freddie Adu, and I remember like how cool that was. And I went to a Menace game. I don't remember what stadium they would have played. That was there. Hoover. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like so, it, the place was absolutely crazy. packed, and I remember going to that Menace game. Um, I also knew the the caliber of players where I was from, uh, like a Lance Roseboom, friend of the pod, or Tucker Sinlinger, who were playing for the menace and i knew that okay like if you are a, if you're a good enough iowa soccer player then this is like the platform for you to to play and be seen um so you know finishing my freshman year at west illinois and then getting to do that uh and just taking pride in being an iowa soccer player was absolutely fantastic so it was right from the get-go it's like you always have guys coming from all over the place and a lot of these collegiate guys don't have their own cars and uh, they don't have their own vehicles so I can honestly say that I was and took pride in and joy in being a, a chauffeur for four years. Um, I used to actually, what I would do is I would have back in the days of CDs, I would have a CD that was all instrumentals. And in order to like, in order to get a ride in my car, 
you would you would have to freestyle drop for at bars least 30 seconds <laughs> but the, the catch was that you could do it in whatever your native tongue was oh. so he, like it was it was very fun because you're like just hearing people from all over the world like it's like they would there was times too i wouldn't tell them the first go about so they would try it in english and like if they failed like real quick or they rhymed not like you would be surprised um the, the words that some people think rhyme uh, but then letting them, <laughs> letting them then get, like go to to their native tongue and then and then just yeah absolutely like spit bars like it was very fun and <laughs> it also became like this running thing where we would like the other guys from my car would invite just random people knowing like what was to come. I mean that's that's the cool part though. I mean the menace has a different element of like hey you guys are buddies. Not many people know each other you're like buddies and you have nowhere to go. Nobody to hang out with for three months. Oh, yeah. And like, that's the cool you piece. Become, like you make, you make, you honestly make, you, you come here and you make life on friends. Well, um, the, so some of the teams that I played for, we would, it'd be like, there'd be like four Brown guys would go play for a team. Yeah. So you were basically like, we would still you meet. Near your place. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Like, but when you play for a team like the menace, like how often are they recruiting more than one or two players from a, from a team? Well, I'm, like, a, no. I'm, I'm, a, I'm against it now. I've, I've learned. And it, like being a part of different rosters, I have, I think that it is a hundred percent helped me to co-manage uh, the, the current, the current team. Right. Because um, I have the full experience on the player side. I know that, you know, for instance, it was, it was hell trying to get Wi-Fi set up every, every summer. So for, first thing I do when, when, when we take over is, this like you're gonna have Wi-Fi set up in a day and age like this, uh, where like guys have summer school and other things, um, or it's like one guy's paying and oh I have to, this is awkward right. I have to collect money from these other guys. Let's okay let's let's take that off their hands or going to a you know a subpar gym and let, this past summer our guys were like living at Lifetime Fitness. Um, I think some of those things where I would have liked the experience to be just a tad better, like br bringing those into it. It's, it's, it's made it successful and like a place that you want to come and want to be. Have you sorted the neighbors out at the apartment complex? That was always a huge <laughs> issue. They would always complain about the late night festivities. I do like, and this is, uh, this is true from, I'm sure like from when you played to when I played, but to now it is, I think it is, it has shifted from a like summer getaway and playing soccer to recruiting a roster of guys that like are there to become a professional i know i know what you're saying and yeah, I was, they also like I to have a good time longest. right like yeah, they also yeah. like yes uh but i still hope that the boys go off for a night or two huh come on oh, yeah guaranteed yeah they have to yeah. but but yeah i would say that we were probably we were probably having a little more fun back in the pdl days than the current uh current boys but we there was also nowhere for us to go after pdl was there <laughs> yeah that's the difference yeah that's fair there was no pro soccer for you guys well I, so no. speaking of we love segues here on the pod oh, we do. so you get done playing with the menace yeah and graduate from seg western yep and there's a segue there there is a segue here um, you end up in charlotte yes so i did i oh, we love this story here, here was here was here's my route um i went to bridges in chicago and and what they do is um uh, it's an agency group you they bridge the gap yeah that's very nice um <laughs> you you just you just play every day you go there i was living on a couch in an apartment i think there was eight guys in a two-bedroom so i was just like living out of a, a a suitcase on a couch would just wake up play soccer um and that was it and so i did that for a while i went on trial at pittsburgh and I, I, the river hounds, river hounds. Yeah. so this is back for the steelers kicking <laughs> us usl there was no usl one then uh, were they a league USL still championship. Uh, uh it what is now the usl championship at that time it was just usl i think okay I yeah that. but That's there was no thing. league one um went to pittsburgh it was just it wasn't it wasn't a good environment for a trialist i would say i thought it was good enough but it was um like none of their current players were there. And I thought the guys that were there weren't great. And I don't know. Uh, but then ended up, you know, uh, linking back up with, with my guy, Mike Jeffries, who was the coach of the menace and um, Brandon Fricky was already there. Fricky had been drafted by the Rapids and, and uh, Charlotte independence. And they, they were linked. So Fricky was in Charlotte. Um, Did Western ever play Butler, by the way? Yes. And we, 
No way they won. No. <laughs> Butler's good. I know. They are they are good. I don't know what the score was. We lost. Yeah, there's a lot of teams Westerners lost to. Is that a <laughs> common trend, Ben? That's a bit harsh for our guests. But keep going. So you're in Charlotte <laughs> with Brandon Fricky. We did well in the Sorry, Charles. I won two summer league championships. Yeah, we missed, we missed that in the whole thing. We did. I played in two NCAA tournaments. We did. We did miss that. Uh, was it fun? It was fun. That's all I got to say. How, how many games did you win in the NCAA tournament? Zero. <laughs> like, you, you played in two. Like that's I, that is cool. That's it's a different environment. It's super. I am cool. the only uh, only summit league defend, two times summit league defender of the year. As a guy who or three. is an attacking right back, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Defend, yeah. Anyways, linked up in Charlotte. Uh, Awkward. Charlotte was, uh, oh, man. Um, another, some good story. Like, like, we've <laughs> heard tell, us, tell us the story about sitting on the, like, your first, yeah, your, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, your yeah, only yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's like, the, that's the most important story. Yeah. Because yeah. you, so you trained for how many weeks? I was, I was at their entire preseason. Um, which for those that don't know, like it's extensive. It's like, yeah, it's month, not like a, it? yeah, we were playing, like we played against MLS, uh, UNC side. Charlotte. We played against North Carolina. We played against, um, the North Carolina courage, like no, the women's courage. team. No, sorry. <laughs> no, uh, just you and uh, I don't know what they're called. Yeah. North Carolina. Um, those guys, but I was there for a long time and I was, I was, our guest is rattled. Was, and we got to get him. <laughs> no, because I know we don't story, want to rattle. I, I know the story that's coming. And it's just, it's just one of those. So um, we get to, and this is by the way, Charlotte independence's inaugural season. Right. So um, I was still there for the first game ever and was in the 18 and it was, um, it was against Charleston battery. Uh, it was in Charlotte. That's and, a big, that's a big game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's mass. I think like, first for ever, those that yeah, don't know, like, this is game. like legit. Uh, like it was a, the beginning of a rivalry, and it was their first ever game as a pro team. Um, we uh, so, somewhat of an even game. We were down one zero. Um, then in the second half, made a few subs to be exact, because I was counting. We made three. Um, <laughs> so Brandon Fricky and I, a friend of the pod, were sitting on the bench, and I think maybe. Um, I don't know if Fricky did the same exact thing as me. I, 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 I can't attest to that, but I know for a fact that I unlaced my boots to the point where like they, they were probably off around the ground. Shin guards were who, who knows where. Um, Socks because are down. Ba- so back in the day, three, three subs, subs used three to be the limit and Correct. you're done. Yeah. Except for if you've ever played PDL, you know that five subs is the limit. <laughs> I was in the pros now. I was, <laughs> I was a pro. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and down one zero. It's about the 85th minute. Um, no gear on. And and Jeffries looks at me and says, Charlie. And I, I said, What? And he's, he's Choke, like, choked on your water. <laughs> <He's> like, <"What?" laughs> uh get ready, you're in. And I looked at Fricky. I was like, What? And he's like, uh, he shrugged his sh- shoulders. So I started, I was just uh, in disarray. Started looking for my stuff, tying up my boots. Um, he literally told me we're gonna go like two in the back or three in the back he said get the ball from the keeper um because they were st- like uh charles the battery were just sitting in and he said i just want you to hit long balls into the box i was like okay easy my mo this is what i this is what i'm here for all i can do this is literally why i'm here in charlotte um tie those boots up tight chuck didn't time tight um <laughs> not tight enough apparently i think the first ball i ever went to strike like they threw the ball in backwards to me, uh, went to strike it about 70 yards in the box. Plant foot goes up from under me and it goes about 20 yards to like the only attacker and my other, like whatever center back had to like save the day. Shanked like two or three more balls and, um, got cut the next day. <laughs> but I, I like going back to, you did play though. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, seven, five to seven minutes, uh, in what that was a useful championship. Um, but back to, back to my locker room and camaraderie and everything. Uh, Jeffrey's called me into his office and said, listen, Charlie, um, I think, you know, what I'm going to say, and I was sitting there like, it, it's not even like, it wasn't even an emotional thing for me. Cause I was like, dang, like that was, that was, that was my time to shine. Blew it. Yeah. He's like, listen, the guys love you. You're great in the locker room, but 
it's, it's not, it's not working out. I said, okay, <laughs> sounds good chief. Um, so I went back to the menace, uh, that summer and played my final year there. Did he come back to the menace? Or was he, does, so he, when menace, yeah. where's he at now? He's still there at Charlotte. Yeah. So then, but that wasn't the end of your, your no, soccer career. Pro indoor. Yeah. That's so this blows my mind a little bit. Cause I hate indoor cause I suck at it. Uh, it's a little too fast. This is Bales is like must be not here. a lot of running, can smash balls, like you get, score. You, get, like, you like if you can take a, a 30 second shift and get off. Yeah, I hate um, that. <laughs> and so I was in Cedar Rapids. I knew that my soccer career was over, but I also didn't want to grow up yet. Um, Why? So I was like the first signing ever for the team. And, you know, once again, has still had a ton of friends. Cedar Rapids for, Rampage. Rampage. And the Who major the arena coach? soccer league. Don't even know. We had like 40 coaches because who's it was, who's a, it was the worst run organization of all time. Um, shout out to the rampage. Um, <laughs> RIP. Yes. Another one. <laughs> yes. I like, yeah, 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 like, another one. Um, but it was fun because it was, Hey, you know, talking to the, the GM at the time, what's my, what's my Charlie Bell's discount for my, my fellow comrades here in Cedar Rapids. And I was getting them like in the legend, the Bud back. Light party zone. Like 50, eh, I would say 40 to 60 people on Friday, Friday or Saturday nights where it was 25, all you can, $25, all you can eat and all you can drink. Um, and they would just come and watch me play. I, I don't know how good you are at like tying stuff into YouTube, but there's a video of me uh, scoring a goal <laughs> and then running, like running up, waddling over to my friends, as some people say it, where I jump up onto the boards and just fall backwards. Into Do a trust party. fall. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was. I mean, well, I had we'll, a blast. Uh, we'll find that. That's that's something I had a blast. we can. I can, yeah, I can, I can send it to you. Um, <laughs> Charlie's got it saved on his phone. It's first, it's first favorite. Somewhere. It's my, it's my screensaver. <laughs> um, but did that for three years, and there were there were guys in that league that thought they or because they were in that league were like, I, I've made it. Like you know, I, like I'm hot shit. And so those weren't locker rooms that I really enjoyed being a part of because I was there because I failed basically. Um, <laughs> and that was my, my three-year MASL career. But it was fun. Just last balls from everywhere. Yeah. So, so you transition into, I don't know this, I don't know the story now. So I'm just, I'm oh. blindly going here. So how do you transition to the menace front office? So I, uh, so what's next? So your three, add, your three-year add, career ended when you were about 25. Yeah. Okay. And you are now just, about yeah. 30. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. So 20, so you, so you get done. So there's, there's no, there's no, that, there's so, no so future was, in yeah, pro indoor. There was, sorry. Yeah, there was anybody two years that. there um, where I was, I was in grad school while playing for the Cedar Rapids pro team. So I was, I was driving back and forth and I was like a grad assistant coach at Western um, and then getting paid to play professional soccer. I'm just absolutely living the dream. Hmm. Uh, probably you like connected us like this is jumping way ahead but you hooked us up at the uh drake western on the way came just last fall of course you did but sorry keep going you don't remember that he With does what? he doesn't but keep going okay so, oh, yes i did yes yeah i know you did so um, you're what 26 yeah i don't i don't know how old ish uh call it 26 going through grad school getting your master's yep yep coaching at western yep coming back to cr and living what? the dream then which is a like what a terrible drive yeah it's it's boring um so as i'm getting my master's i was applying to all kinds of jobs because i realized i don't want to play indoor soccer anymore um but i want to i want to work in soccer and i, I for some reason i didn't really want to coach um which I, I enjoy i enjoy coaching i just disagree with some of the systems that are in place right now um Hmm. I was applying for ticket sales jobs at like every MLS club, every USL championship oh, club. That, you would have hated that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that wouldn't have been fun. But uh, and I, I was that's like, like you start. That's like that's how you like, start. Like, yeah, I mean, you start and like yeah. get after it. Um, and I wasn't even like close to getting any of those for some reason. Um, and then Menace decided that they were going to have for the first time ever they were going to hire. Uh, interns that were ticket sales people and they reached out to me and I decided to take it um, for like eight dollars an hour uh, plus 
plus some commission on selling ten dollar tickets. Um, Who was the? Well, I got okay. Hold on a minute, because I got a couple of questions, and then uh, have you ever been a menace maniac? <laughs> That's when I was a player. One time. Oh, where did you? You put the head on and I put the full suit on. I went to a library. Okay. I get a back in there. It was what hot. Was my hands were sweaty. I told you. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's nervous. Uh, oh yeah. So there's a good. I mean. Everybody's been the menace yeah, mascot in the it's day, a, right? It's a rite of passage. 100%. I think so. I think so, so even our current front office, um, you know, I played Lyle started as an intern, and then Sydney running uh, um, soccer operations was also an intern. So, pretty cool stuff. But that's cool. That's a cool story. Yeah, I started. I started um, as a ticket salesperson, and I was living on my buddy's couch uh, in downtown Des Moines. Um, and hide a bed, hide a bed couch. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah. It was it was fine. I as soon as I got in there and they said sell tickets, I kind of slowly but surely just started taking on other roles. Um, whether it was like helping with like camps or marketing or social media. Um, who was the GM that hired you? Do that you was remember? Tiley. Okay. So it was 2018. Um and then yeah, we had a we had a we had a good year, good summer. Um, I wasn't really sure what was next because it was it was a it was just a summer long gig. Um, and Adam Small, who had been with the club forever, who's just an absolutely phenomenal human being, uh, was deciding that he was going to become just a teacher so he could have the summers with his with his younger kids. Um, so a sales and marketing position was then created for me. Uh, and Tylee wanted me to stay on staff. So took that on. And that was a little more fun because it was sponsorship and higher dollar amounts. And I, I had more freedom to create things that could enhance the game and, and, and do good stuff for the community. So did that for a while. And Tylee ended up leaving. Um, and Lyle and myself kind of had a, a trial period. Like, can you guys run the club and proved our worth? And the rest is... The rest is history, maybe. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, good history, menace history. Yeah, but it's a lot of pressure. So yeah. it's interesting. We talked to Dean Johnson, like to skip a little bit ahead, the new coach this yep. year. I was like, Dino, you like you gotta you gotta win. Oh, the pressure to win is real. And it's like on you guys too. Do you call, right? like, do you call him Dino yet? I'll call I will if you want me to. Yeah, I think that's his nickname. Okay. Sorry, D. No. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a tease listen to the podcast yeah to yeah see what he likes to be called that's true i like the pressure though well it's that's the thing about the menace and that we've sort of alluded to that uh in our conversation with Gino. um just that basically there's so much pressure like the, the krauses have done such a good job at building this team that like the expectation is you will go undefeated you will go to the playoffs you will win the playoffs yeah like it's, you, you should also then be the champion. Since 2018, it's it's reached uh, an entirely new level. Um, this this past year, playing Chicago, so FC United, the Chicago team, that was the first regular season loss in over over three years. Like we went on to win a national championship, but I remember that happening and being like, oh man, I was a guy who just, you know, was was, was running a club. <laughs> Did you think you were getting sacked? Years. Thought I was getting sacked. Um, <laughs> it would not have been a bad decision. But, I, but <laughs> I, I, I do like the pressure that comes along with it. I also like the uh, the notation of, of of just like menace and like nobody likes us and everyone wants to beat us. Like I I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean that that final we talk about it often, but that final when there was like over seven thousand people yeah. at Valley Stadium was the best environment. I I think nobody can argue in in the history of Iowa soccer. That was, it was surreal. It was I, and I was, I was up in my perch and I, you know, I was just waving down to, to, to folks, but I was getting nervous because no one was showing up. Everyone decided to show up like at six 45. Cause and, we were in the parking lot drinking Charlie. Yeah. And yeah, we got in trouble got, for that I too. I got in trouble for that. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to deal with that this <laughs> summer, by the way, we're going to have to really. All right. And moving on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Yes, it was a, it was a very cool environment. It was a it was a good game. It was back and forth. It was two very good teams on display. Um, and then seeing like for me, like looking down and just seeing 
the bleachers filled with with overflow and whether it was the hill or red army society um and then also the amount of people that stuck around to see like us lift a trophy and everything um that was sweet i'm glad i'm glad i didn't have to talk afterwards because i it's a mixed bag of emotions i was gonna say you must <laughs> I, I can't imagine what you must have felt when you were looking down like oh geez we really did it didn't we it was it was relief because well, I, do. I remember getting a phone call hey blake we need some like cones we need some help with parking and like yeah I, it was cool. it was unbelievable it was anything. super like, cool yeah i'm, you a, guys did I'm well. a resourceful individual that took you know how those are heavy <laughs> I, I went over to keck parking and borrowed i don't know how many cones just to set up just so we could allow our fans to be behind that goal um and i yeah myself and one other person did that for maybe three hours to get it over there but what, what people don't i don't think understand was that our staff because we hosted every round of the playoffs we worked every day for a month like you guys are getting saturdays, crushed saturdays and sundays like every day for a month and game days aren't like a, unfortunately you can't just relax and like put your feet up and it watch takes, unfortunately it takes, it takes two and a half to four hours to set up valley stadium just with signage alone um and then we're there usually three hours before kickoff and well, two hours after tearing down yeah and you t- <laughs> it's funny because like you obviously interned and you did all that stuff but n- and now you're you're still like you're maybe not doing as much lifting and running around but like you're still there on point like oh i do the it show. no i mean i know i remember right. him picking up the kick forward tent yeah I, I'm no, a, I, I'm that's firm, what i mean i'm like, a firm believer and lead by example so yeah. i i I'll instruct people as to what to do or where to be, but I'll be alongside of doing it. Yeah. So I know love... that's what I meant by it. It's just like, you're, it's not like you stopped, you got away from it. No, I get, I become a sweaty boy on those mornings, <laughs> lifting and pulling and yeah, he's got to yeah. go home for a shower doesn't he? before <laughs> he puts his three piece suit on. Yeah. Right. So people like we frequently don't we Ben get people that ask like, Hey, what are the questions going to be? Like, what are we going to talk about? And, like we never give that because we always kind of fly by the seat of our pants and, to be fair to you, Chuke, you haven't said it yet, but like, I'm curious, what's the next, like, what's the next plan for you to put you on the spot big time now? Oh, next up for me, um, we'll win another championship. Well, it has to be right. Yes. If you don't, do you get, exactly. we have a different conversation. Wow. Maybe, maybe I'm hosting the pod. If I get sacked. <laughs> hey. It becomes a three. Like, <laughs> no, no, we've been, he's sacking us. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, next for me, I, like, so me, just being extremely passionate about the game, growing the game. I think that it like we all three, like the three of us know that the next step to grow the game is, you know, last week was absolutely phenomenal. Um, was it, yeah, last week was abs- two weeks ago. That was two weeks well, ago. We, we, yeah, yeah, but be careful. I can't we, remember. We might, oh, we, we might put this out late uh, to help those break, few, not breaking a news. Few weeks ago, yeah. yeah, a few weeks ago when it became official and signing the franchise agreement, you know, the pro Iowa movement did its job and we're officially you know been been awarded or granted a usl championship franchise i want to play a major part in that i don't know um you know in in what capacity or what my role will be but any anywhere where i can get to to grow the level or grow the game um you know i'm i'm, I'm gonna do and i want to win as many national championships for the menace in the meantime well, so you got it. what two more tries probably yeah a little three peat That'd be impressive. Unless there's more breaking news that we don't know about. Yeah, fair enough. Probably not though. No more. Okay. Um, so so three P. Yeah, that'll be a three P. That'll be challenging. I, yeah, I oh, believe yeah. that to be the truth. Targets on our back. I believe that to be true. How many? You ha- did you have your roster set for this summer? No. We're, we're, like we're we're uh, we're actively recruiting still. Um, we're, we're we're. So what do players do that think they're they're good enough? What do you How mean? can they submit? Like, like if I was like, oh. yo, I think I'm ready, except for the part where I got hurt today. Um, hey, you're actively recruiting. How do the people like? How do they find you? So, if you guys have any film you want to send my way, okay. Um, All right. Hey, babe, I've got a really I'm nice juggling soccer. video that I can send you. <laughs> it's on TikTic. From the state fair. Oh, there's, you got oh, actually, actually, I've got two videos. Two videos. videos. Yeah, 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 he's got two videos yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I'm gonna send those. Submit those along with our. Uh, we're still pretty disappointed. If you send me those videos, then I will send them to Dino, our coach, and say, "Hey, yeah, uh, hey, we'll skip. Hey, we'll skip the boss. Yeah. Let's go straight to Dino because we got, we got. Okay, yeah, us actually, and Dino are good buddies. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, submit them. Just, say like, what do you think? No, just say. Hey, my heard, touch. Heard, you're, heard you're looking for open cut players. <laughs> we took Dino to a 
Macros daiquiri guy. bar. That was amazing. So we're set. He is, yeah. He seems like he's a good boy, though. I think he's going to be. Uh, because of the flow. I think he, he, I my big thing was in 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 the new, in the process of hiring a coach. Like you need a player's coach. You need someone that's going to get on with the guys from from the start and from the get go because you have to you have to build that team so quickly and get like uh, gain their trust and and bring them together as a group. And a strong leader is the best way to do yeah. that. Listening to his story was interesting. I mean, like he's just like. Oh, he's a proven winner, and I'm yeah. also I'm also looking for that, and, and a and proven recruiter, proven recruiter. So, um, it's pretty wild, like you know, the two of us working together to build an open cup roster and a and a summer team, um, to hear how many people just know him. I, I feel like he's friends with everyone. Um, That's great. That, that is great. Uh, you just said you're friends with him. Uh, yeah, you well, barely know the guy. Well, we are. Yeah, I mean, you think you're friends. I don't know what he thinks. But. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, so um, I think we've got a good grasp on the Charlie Bale story. So now <laughs> it's time for the business end of this. Okay. Um, you've had a long time to think about this, and I expect that you are prepared. Oh. But Another we need on the spot. We need no, your I, we need your five, five aside. Team. Yes, I wrote that down. Yeah, and, and you were absolute you shit the last time. You took. A, how long did he take? Remember how long he took? He did. So that's because I, I have take, so many friends too, and I feel bad for. In our first take in LA. Oh my god! Yeah, it, it, was, on. it was painful. Oh, he's he's done his he's research. Got it. Okay, right. now so here's here. First, we need your your all time uh, players you've played with. Okay. Okay. At like so, even like playing pickup counts. Absolutely. Okay. So like, but I think that's my that's the same as my five aside. Okay, so give us your best five-a-side squad, your favorite team that you're going to play with because you love to play. Who are your four best friends that are going to join you? <laughs> or I said the first time I don't think he made the squad. That's right. You put yourself – you were standing off. Yeah. So like, you loves, he loves to win. All right, we're going to find out. I'm sure – how many nights have you woken up at like 4 a.m. and just like just about laid this. there till 5 oh, before so you now he's thinking sleep? Now yeah. you got him yeah. thinking well, now. Yeah, because I he forgot had, to put myself – Yeah, on he had four. I thought I was starting. <laughs> Well, I'm starting now, guys. Um, <laughs> well, fortunately, that 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 episode doesn't exist, so nobody's gonna know who your other. So you're okay. Uh, myself and Brandon Fricky in the back. We got. Or so, you want me to start a keeper? Zobek and goal. Oof. We got. Yeah, that's tough already. Pod. He's on the. He's he's on a podcast. Fricky's had a podcast. So I mean, there's two soccer legend, Iowa soccer legends there. We got uh, Ian Christensen, Lance Here. Roseboom. That's squad. And I, I'm going. Not many goals being scored yet. And 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 who's you pitch, and and I don't have a true like number nine in there, but it's like those guys are just knocking the ball around and moving around. And there's a lot of possession stats, like ninety ten. But the thing think is, all you have to do, been. you just got to get him, get Charlie within like. I know who's distance. falling up that he he can set me. He better not get in the way of who's the. I saw, has I've, a shot. From like I, yeah, that's true. You might not be quick enough to get away. Lance, so, Lance though, can, this can is absolutely. Like, this is like. An indoor soccer field, or is a, it's a, it's a, it's a mini, mini pitch, pitch, dude. Oh, mini pitch. I'm still in. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, Lance will take care of you, though. He's he's a freaking. Well, I only man. get to count him now because we we just started playing with him, and he's. Oh, is that why? He, he <laughs> that's why that's the the, you I thought you were talking about me. No. <laughs> you played with him for two weeks, and now yep. all of a sudden he's in your oh, five. He'd side. be in my five side team too. Hundred percent. Yeah, he's fun to I play don't with. Think he's gonna lose a Wednesday morning. Kids no, I'm gonna put him on my team every time. Like. Stand I, next literally, I literally make the team. Okay, well, I'm going to bribe you to make sure that I'm on his team. What's excuse you? <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's a good. That's I'm I'm glad that you came prepared this time. Yeah. Um, thank you. You're you're welcome. Uh, so I think that that this is probably where we say goodbye for now. But uh, we're super excited to you support. Said, you said it was going to be a 20 minute pod too. We did. Well, that's because you're you're being so difficult. <laughs> I was, uh, right now, I was being difficult. No, you were oh, earlier. As soon oh. as as soon as we hit record, you were not difficult. Oh. It's run over an hour. Yeah. So let's. Yeah, we can cut it. But uh, thank you, Charlie, for taking the time out of your busy work day because we know you'd be at the office right now slaving away if it weren't uh, for us. I love moments. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, get into the top. Well, I think he's got it. Do you think he can get in the top five of all time downloads? I Lance, don't think so. No, Lance, gosh, gosh, no. Lance already in the top five, and he's only been on for like, I don't know, like less than a month. Is Dino in the top five? Not yet, but he has a very, very impressive first uh, week downloads. Okay. So he's 
is strong. Uh, but but like, when we don't release release this until like mid June, yeah, the trail will never be on the top. <laughs> just, just won't make any sense. All right, Mr. Haybales, we love you, man. Thanks for your pleasure. help. We uh, we really appreciate you chatting with us. I appreciate the uh, upgrade of status. The legend. <laughs> All right, Siebs, that was fun. It's probably a good thing that we um, recorded a second time. Yeah, the first time was fun though too. We had well, of uh, course it was fun. We had some sunglasses on. One of the boys. Um, back in LA so yeah we I think this was probably at least a little <clears throat> uh, more coherent um, more professionally done yes most definitely both of those things so uh, anyway thank you to Menace uh, GM Charlie Bales um, Imperial All-Star and uh, actually my understanding is he may be appearing on the U.S. Open Cup roster this spring and that's more uh, really ah, he's, got, he's got a red card that he needs to get expunged so uh, the only way to do that is to roster yourself. Whoa. <laughs> I love it. That'd be great. So um, as you can see, Ben laughing, check us out on YouTube. Um, subscribe, like, comment. That's a, what our sponsors like. Where else can they find us, Ben? Uh, www.kfsoccer.com. Uh, social media, we're at KIF Soccer um, on Instagram and Facebook, and then at KIF underscore soccer on Twitter. Um, we're not really that active on TikTok yet, but Blake keeps threatening to make it so. Um, we do have one good video. We do have one good Search. video. I don't even know how to kick, kick it forward and you'll find it. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. So in the meantime, um, slide to the DMs. Let us know what's going on. High school season is just around the corner. Spring is, uh, it's what, like 50 degrees today. So we're thinking spring's around the corner. So uh, if you've got any ideas for the pod or people you want to hear on, Sliding those DMs. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. <laughs>